Hi, Malik. Um, I have to tell you, I'm so excited to talk to you today. And so the first thing I want to do is introduce myself. I'm Rebecca Shaw. Uh, I am the chief scientist for the World Wildlife Fund. And I know you're interested in climate change. And I like to study climate change and its impacts, how it affects animals and plants and people. And I know that you've been interested in climate change and environmental justice and also um, animals. And I heard that about a taco game that you designed to raise funds for WWF. And I, I saw it and I, I saw the game and it's so, it's so fun. And I also heard that you started the first ever activism club at your school where you talk with your friends about climate change and environmental justice and i just want to tell you we need leaders like you so much right now i know you know that but you can't even know how important your actions are in really changing the planet and and make and stopping climate change so i just wanted to thank you for everything uh, that you've been focused on. And I can't wait to just talk to you today. Me too, wanna... I really want to talk. Perfect. Do you want to introduce um, yourself? Yeah, my name is Malik. And I'm eight years old. And I really, really like animals. And I like doing art. And since I like animals so much, I want to help them. And that's one reason why I started my activism club at my school that you mentioned with mm -hmm. my friend Antonia. Uh, I heard about that you were in the Amazon rainforest. Mm -hmm. um, when you were there, did you help were you helping animals or were you more just like doing like research or or were you doing like both yeah but that's a great question so when i started out in research i lived in the amazon on the river on a floating raft and we went down there to study um the ways in which the flooding of the forest, so you know the Amazon River floods all the land around it every year when the waters get really high, and then it comes back. And so we wanted to know how that flooding impacted the animals and the plants in the Amazon. The, the unfortunate thing was though, or maybe the fortunate thing, but the unfortunate thing was that in the, in the time I was down there, almost everything around us got deforested. And there were so many fires that we couldn't really study the impact of the flooding. We ended up studying the impact of the fires on the plants and animals. And so that's what really got me started thinking that I wanted to better understand why the forest was being cut down particularly since it's so important for storing carbon for climate change. And so that's why I really devoted myself to this kind of work and to studying climate change. So we were doing both. We were doing the research to understand the deforestation impacts on the animals. And we, in doing so, we were also helping to better understand what we needed to do to protect those animals. Are there any species that you know that have that you know have been endangered in the past but are now doing well? And do you know if WWF did anything to help them? Yeah. Okay, so I love this question because what is the logo for WWF? The panda. panda. Yeah. And the giant panda is the logo is the mascot for WWF, and it also just got taken off the endangered species list in July of this year. Pandas are one of my favorite animals. Oh gosh, mine too. Did you, have you ever seen one, a real live one? Yeah, they're really big. 
They're really big and, and they're funny. And they, and so, they do really funny. They, they are really funny. But so WWF worked with the country of China um, starting like way back in the 60s and so 50 years ago uh, when the panda was getting in trouble because all its habitat was was um, being destroyed by development in China. And WWF and China worked together to do research to show that the habitat for pandas was declining and it had declined by 50%. And then we worked together with the government of China to develop a management plan to protect the forest and to uh, reintroduce the pandas into their home. And so now the giant panda, even though it's still vulnerable, it has good protection and the Chinese government took it off the endangered species list and is committed as WWF is to make sure that it will always be safe. And so that is a really fun, fun outcome from my perspective. <laughs> panda! Yay, Yay panda! Me too. I know that in Boston, there are more trees in places that have more white people and less trees in places that have more people of color. And this causes a lot of health issues for some of those people. Do you know if this is the same in other cities and countries? Yeah, unfortunately, it is the same in other cities and other countries. It's really clear, the science is really clear that nature is really, really good for your health. And so nature can be, you could go out to a wilderness area or you just go to a park down the street. It's really, really good for your health. Um, in general, just your blood circulates better. It makes you happier because it improves your mood and it also makes you more productive. You're not going to believe this, but children who walk 20 minutes in a park concentrate in school longer and have better participation. So it is true that there are more parks in areas that are dominated by white people and fewer in areas and cities with people of color. But we need to change that together. So as a doctor, I prescribe safe, well-managed parks in every school district so that everybody could have access to nature that makes them healthier. And there are, there are um, quite a bit of, of efforts across the United States to do this. There's a big focus, and you might be interested in this, there's a big focus on planting trees increasing parks for for healthy people but also planting trees to combat climate change because trees take the carbon dioxide out of the atmosphere but they also shade the city so the city won't get so hot so there's lots of good reasons to have more parks and more parks in neighborhoods with people of color and so i think that's a great thing to work on and i think maybe that's something we could work on together at some point Humans seem to be wrecking the earth. I feel like our planet is sick with a fever and we cause its fear. What do you think are a few things that families and kids could do to help with climate change and make things fair for other species that live on this planet besides humans? Yeah, that is such a great question, Malik. And I like that you call, um, you say that the planet has a fever because it is warming, just like a body warms when you get sick and you have a fever. So it's really true that the planet has a fever. There's lots of things that we can do. Um, as you know, anything that puts greenhouse gases into the atmosphere is going to increase climate change. So anything we can do to pull um, greenhouse gases or carbon dioxide out of the atmosphere or to stop putting it in the atmosphere 
the better off we'll be. 75% of the greenhouse gases that get emitted to the atmosphere come from our burning of fossil fuels. So burning of the gas that fuels our cars and fuels our homes and, and things like that. So if we could do whatever we can to decrease our dependence on fossil fuels, like walk or take the bus instead of driving if it's possible, turn off the lights when you're not using them, all that stuff really matters. And it really matters that we all do our part right now. We can't wait any longer. It also is important to think about what we eat because um, food and the production of food is responsible for 70% of all the deforestation. And then the, the last thing is, and it makes sense if you think about it, is just consume less stuff in general and eliminate anything that is intended to be used only one time and then thrown away. I feel like many adults uh, like understand climate change, but they like they spend their time like focusing on other things and like trying to get money and stuff mm -hmm. when there would be no point in m money or anything else if it didn't have a world to happen on. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and how could people help them make better choices? Because I know that those are not good choices. <laughs> no, I would agree with you that right now, we adults are not making good choices. You know, and the funny thing is, um, psychology teaches us that it's really hard to change your habits as you get older like you really have to think hard about changing your habits because we just get so used to doing the same thing over and over again driving everywhere taking a flight to go everywhere and it's really hard to change those habits and um that is why I think that the real change is often dependent on younger generations that aren't stuck in their habits and they're really willing to create a different kind of future for themselves. So I will do everything I can to help the adults make better choices by providing them better information and maybe trying to help motivate them in different ways to change their habits to make better decisions. But I think it's going to really count. We really are counting on you as well to help out, to take charge of your generation and make sure they're making good decisions and making their voices be heard. I think the adults need to know that the children are really counting on them. And if you can speak very loudly to the adults about how you're counting on them to do the right thing and make big changes, I think something might, different might happen. Does that sound good to you? Yeah. Mm -hmm. What's your favorite animal that you've ever seen in person? Um, this is not an easy one for me because I have seen lots of amazing things in the wild. But I have to say the thing that took my breath away the most, I'm a scuba diver. And the thing that I saw underwater that took my breath away the most was a whale shark. Do you know what those are? A, a what? A whale shark? A whale shark, yeah. You saw like a, an in-person whale shark? Underwater when I was scuba diving. It was so exciting. They're really big. <laughs> they're giant and they're really gentle. It was a little scared, right? My heart really started pounding because I wasn't 100% sure that what I was seeing was a whale shark until it got really close to me. And then you realize it's so, so big, but it's not gonna do anything to me. It's not gonna go after me or anything, but it's so big. It was really exciting and it did take my breath away even when I was scuba diving. So if you could tell adults or scientists like me, just one thing, what would it be? Probably that, like, 
I was taught that if I have something nice, I should clean it up. Mm -hmm. And, well, like, like take care of it. Mm-hmm. And if I make a mess of it, I should clean it up. Mm-hmm. And even though I might not clean up my Legos, it's still adult's responsibility to clean up this our planet for the next generations that are going to use it and that includes animals that's a great message that's a great message for adults and i am going to what i'm going to let people know what you said today and tell them to clean up their mess before they go to bed that would be a good thing for adults to do tonight. <laughs> so um, Malik, thank you so much for taking the time and spending time with me today for this very special Ask a Scientist. Um, I really look forward to following you and to see what you achieve. I very much appreciate the work you're doing uh, to inspire other kids to take action and to address the climate crisis. And it's up to the adults like myself to continue working to ensure that um, you get a healthy planet for your generation and for all the generations after that. And then you can pick up the, you can pick up the baton and keep it, the planet cleaned up when you're an adult. So thank you very much for everything you're doing. And I look forward to connecting with you again soon. Me too. It was really nice seeing you. Really nice to talk to you. <laughs>